Jack Clips Painting here, and we are doing a start to finish guide on how to get some Necromunda models ready for the tabletop. I've got one of these brand new Delic or Deloc, I'm not exactly sure how to say it, but we've got one of these awesome futuristic gunslinger guys, and I'm also going to be using only one type of paint on this guy. We're going to be using the new Pro Acryl paints from Monument Games, and I uh, just wanted to say up front that I've not been paid. This is not a promotion. This is just purely my opinions on the paints. And we're going to get right down to it by starting off our leather coats with some mahogany and airbrushing that base coat on there. I'm going to be trying to do it semi-transparently so that the black primer underneath the mahogany makes it a little bit darker. And we leave some of those nice shadows and the folds of that leather... Uh, Duster? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a duster. I'm not exactly sure what to call this particular piece of clothing, but we're just going to be calling it a duster from now on. So now that that's done, our next color is going to be burnt red. This is kind of a darker red with some black mixed into it. You can see it in the airbrush there. And we're gonna do kind of a reverse gradient on this guy. I thought it would be cool, instead of having all the color on the top of the model, let's fade that color down to the hem of that duster so that maybe that leather is just kind of like some weird, you know, Necromunda space leather where all of the color is kind of down on the hem and the top of the duster is that darker, mahogany brown color and I'm also spraying the casings of his little pistols there just to make those red that's a callback to the old 40k and also inside of the popped collar we're gonna have some fiery color in there now we're gonna move to bold pyrol red this is a really bright red I love this color it really pops and we're just gonna pop out that gradient on the hem of the duster get that nice fiery color going on I like the look of this kind of uh, hot themed duster with this leather with the kind of reverse gradient on it. I think it looks really cool. And again, I'm going to get inside of that high collar just to give some cool lighting to the, the head when we put the head in the, uh, in the body there. And I'm also going to be highlighting our guns one more time. Now I'm going to grab some golden yellow and I'm going to add just a little bit of that to our bold pyrrole red to get it a little bit brighter just so we can pop out that fiery red just a little bit more on the hem of the duster and the other areas that we've been airbrushing our reds on. So that way we have just that extra amount of pop it really makes that red look, you know, like hot fire, just really getting that hot uh, theme into these colors because we're going to do some hot and cold uh, contrast. Next I've got the head assembly, I primed it gray with some of our Steinol Res primer. And I've got dark warm gray and some tanned flesh. I'm going to be mixing those two together to get kind of a grayish flesh tone. In the new lore, the House Delac gang has some like pale ashy skin. And these Pro Acryls are kind of meant to be mixed, like they lend themselves really well to mixing. Uh, you're not going to have a massive slew of colors in the starter set but you can always mix colors together to get what you want and that's what we're doing our flesh base coat in and they mix great i really like uh being able to make my own colors on the fly although sometimes it is nice to have you know a ready-made color sometimes you just want to mix to get that perfect hue now i'm going to add some bright warm gray into that previous mix of flesh you can see it in the airbrush there just to brighten it up a little bit get that pale skin really popping on the model and I'm just doing kind of a top-down airbrush highlight on our flesh to make sure that the shadows of the face are still that kind of ashen gray flesh uh, color. So that way um, we're, we're really bringing that pale skin to the forefront. And it's also very cool colors. So the, the skin is very cold and clammy almost. And that works really good for our contrast. Next I'm going to pull out some coal black and we're just going to base coat in all of the stuff on the model that we want to be black. He's got these ballistic armor plates sewn into his duster so I'm just going to black those out as well as some other things like some little belts and the suppressors on his pistols 
gloves, that kind of thing. Just base those out. All right, next we're going to pull out some silver and some coal black. And I normally use my scale 75 metallics. You know how much I like those. But these metallics are actually really nice. They're kind of giving my scale 75s a run for their money. Uh, the only thing that I personally don't like is mixing metallics with the uh, basic pigments. But the metallics on this guy came out really nice. So I wanted to take that silver and make it a little bit darker just for our base coat. So I just mixed in a couple of drops of that coal black. And it got a pretty nice gunmetal color. I really like it. You can see all of our silvers based in there. I'm going to grab some rich gold and do exactly the same thing. Just mix a little bit of coal black in there to get us that black gold that I like to base things in. And I'm just going to do all the buckles and his like belt buckle thing with the cool... Uh, I don't know, it looks like some kind of demon head or something on there. It's pretty pretty metal, I like it. I'm just gonna base those in with that black gold mixture. Now I'm grabbing some golden brown. This is a nice kind of ochre color. And he's got this very delicate trim uh, piping kind of stuff on his duster going all the way around all of the edges. And so I'm just gonna use the side of my brush where I can to just kind of edge highlight that and block in that that piping with the golden yellow and that way we have an even hotter color we got this bright yellow that's going to be giving a, a trim color to our red duster it looks really cool so you can see it all blocked in after that we're going to grab some of that golden yellow again and I'm just going to highlight the piping with that golden yellow to pop it even more And for the final highlight, I've got some ivory. This is a darker ivory. It's called Eye for an Ivory. And I'm just going to find little corners of the piping and areas where it's raised. You can see on kind of the raised folds of the duster around the base there and some of the brighter points that would catch some light. I'm just going to give a little highlight of that ivory to pop out that yellow. Just that way it catches the eye a little bit more. Next, I'm going to pull out some gloss varnish. We're going to gloss coat this guy with the airbrush so that we can get a really, really clean wash on him. Don't want to mess up that nice airbrush fade that we got going on his cool duster. Very light. I like to mix my gloss varnish with Vallejo Flow Improver. I think it gets a little bit better result when I use Flow Improver with the gloss varnish. So just very lightly go around the model. Make sure to constantly turn the model, spray it at different angles. So that way you're not building up that varnish too much in any one spot. Okay, now that we got that on there, next thing we're going to do is pull out our Army Painter wash system. I got the Quick Shade Wash Mix Medium and some Dark Tone. I'm just going to mix that up in my little tray here with some water. Then set my arm to Turbo Drive and mix it up really good. And after that, we're just going to slather it on the model, get it into all the details all over. And then once you have it on the model, make sure to get some water into your brush, some clean water, and kind of wick away the excess because we don't want those big black puddles forming on the bottom of our duster. We just want to lightly shade all of those folds and textures across the, uh, the leather there. So you can see I'm wicking that away so that way we don't have any puddles. And just kind of watch it as it's drying for the first minute or two. It's going to flow down with gravity and you want to wick away any puddles that form before they dry up and create nasty coffee stains. All right, so here's the wash all dried up. We got all those details shaded, but he's still a little shiny. So what we're going to do is pull out the matte varnish from Vallejo. And when I use matte varnish, I actually like to mix it with airbrush thinner. And same reason, I think it gets better results when I use the thinner. I'm not exactly sure why. I just, you know, it just feels that way. It might be a placebo effect. That's what I like to do. Um, and it seems to work every time. So I'm going to keep doing it. And again, same thing. Just spray all over the model, constantly turn it around. You don't want to build up any varnish too much in any one spot. After that's dry, we're going to get some dark, warm gray. This is a darker gray, and I'm just going to glaze some highlights onto the areas that we base coated in coal black. And we're 
trying to get this guy ready for the tabletop pretty quickly so I'm not going to be spending a ton of time on highlights. And so I'm just glazing that on. If you put too much paint on the model, just get some water on your brush and kind of wick away that excess glaze before it dries. Push it around a little bit so that it forms at the top of those black plates, uh, just like our airbrush highlights are from the top down. After that, I'm going to mix some bright warm gray with our dark warm gray to get a slightly lighter gray. And I'm just going to edge highlight everything. I'm not going to go around and edge highlight every single little detail. I'm just going to catch the tops of stuff. You can see I'm edge highlighting the tops of these plates just to pick them out a little bit. So that way our light source is consistent and every single little detail isn't edge highlighted. I'm not a huge fan of that look. I like my edge highlights to be a little bit more in line with direct light sources, just like our airbrushing stuff. So that way um, it's a little more cohesive. After that, we're going to edge highlight some of the details on our duster. I've got some mahogany and some of that ivory that we had earlier. I'm just going to mix those two together to get a slightly brighter mahogany color. Edge highlight some of these details, pop them out a little bit. After that, we're going to highlight our metallics. I've got some of our silver again, and I'm just going to be highlighting some of those areas, bringing a shine back to them because we still want these guns to have kind of a darker gunmetal look to go with that kind of grittier Necromunda vibe. So where I can, I'm just going to edge highlight and use the sides of my brush to get clean edges and then just kind of dry brush those areas, use my little detail brush. And next, I'm going to pull out the rich gold and do the same thing. We're gonna bring a shine back to all of our gold pieces. For the complex details, like his belt buckle, I'm just gonna use the side of my brush to kinda of dry brush those details and bring a shine back to them. Gonna grab our bold pyrrol red one more time, and I'm gonna edge highlight the details on our really cool suppressed auto pistols. Just bring it pop to those edges, pop out the details on everything. Now I've got some bright warm gray one more time and I'm just gonna do some sketchy highlights on the face, kind of block out some of the larger features. And I think in the lore they talk about some of the Necromunda gangs for House Delok. They like to put ash on their faces, like the ash stalkers or something like that. So maybe that's what this is. We're just gonna kind of sketch those in and bring out those details and kind of emphasize the uh, dry, pale skin. Maybe some ash has been put on there. All right, here he is all assembled. You can see the nice contrast between his cold, pale skin and the hot red leather looking really cool. So now we're going to pull out the base because these Necromunda models come with really cool Necromunda bases. We're going to pull out our silver and we're just going to airbrush that base to get it a nice, clean metallic color. After that, I'm going to put some mahogany in the airbrush with some flow improver, and I'm just going to focus on some of the deeper recesses where some like rust or grime would build up, and I'm just going to spray a light transparent coat of mahogany in there to kind of dirty up that metal a little bit before our weathering, so that way we have some multi-layered weathering making this metal look really cool. Now I'm going to grab the dark tone one more time and just take pure dark tone and dab it into all of the details. Just kind of slather it on there to really dirty up this metal so that way we're having a nice dark metal that we can then highlight back up to a shinier scuffed metal after our weathering. All right, now I'm going to pull out some of this Agent Orange. And I usually like to do these weathering techniques with some of my other paints, but you can do, uh, do it with these just fine. I usually use Secret Weapon, but this orange works. Gonna put a little bit of orange in our wash tray and get a boatload of water in there and thin it out so it's really really thin almost like a really thin orange juice and then i'm going to slather it all over the model and let it build up in there and then very lightly take a paper towel and kind of dab off the excess that way it's not huge 
chunky rust on there that's built up. It's more of like a rusty patina, more like you would see in real life. So it might take a couple of tries, put some on, dab it off, put some on, dab it off until you get the look that you want. And then when that's dry, we got some nice rusty metal and I'm gonna take our silver and dry brush over that base to kind of scuff up the surface so that way we've got some weathering and that multi-layered weathering where you have the dirt and the grime and the rust and then a little bit of the scuffed up details on top make it look really lived in. And last, I'm gonna pull out some coal black and paint a nice clean black rim on our base. Black rim on the base, 100% of the time. If you ask me about a different color, always gonna tell you to use a black rim. It always looks the best, but they're your models, so do what you want. But if you ask my opinion, I'm always gonna say the black rim. And here he is, all finished. I did a very light matte coat to finish everything out, but the recording didn't really catch it all that well, so I just left it out. Um, you know how I finish models, just a very diluted matte coat to kind of clean everything up, uniform all the finishes. And here he is in all his gritty Necromunda glory. I love the House Deloc gang. I know I might be saying it wrong, but I've always called them Deloc, so it's a hard habit to break. But super fun model to paint, ready for the table really quickly without a whole lot of work. So I hope you like this tutorial. Make sure to catch us next time. And if you haven't already, come over to Twitch. That's where all the fun is. You get to live interact with me and watch me do cool painting projects on there. I'll catch you all next time.